Hi, so today I thought we'd have a look at something a little bit different. If you follow my blog, which is here on screen, www.andhcrafts.wordpress.com, you'll know that apart from creating vector cutting files in Inkscape or Scan and Cut, that I I like to sew and for about just about a year now I've owned a Janome embroidery machine a change but I like the idea that I can combine my brother scan and cup with my sewing projects so this applique facility was only added in to essentials on the 18th of July and by the 26th of July a week later they'd already updated it which I think is amazing so what I'm going to do now I'm going to create another split font and I'm going to try out this new feature whereby the cut file is two milli bigger and hopefully see if that works so I'm going to close all this down now I've got Embrilliance open, I'm going to get rid of, if anybody, if any of you are new to, to my videos, that, that's my uh, blog address. I'm going to get rid of that, I'm going to come over here and open and I've got the letter that I want to use as a JEF file on my desktop. So I'm going to find that and open it. And when you bring a file into Embrilliance, it brings it in by default to fit your hoop. Now, I'm on my biggest hoop here at the moment, which is 170 millimeters by 200 millimeters. And if I go over here to inches, you'll see the size down there. It's just under seven by eight. So I'm going to get one of these little drag handles in the corner and just drag it in a little bit to make it smaller. And then I'm going to come up here to this icon, which is fit to hoop. And that puts it in the center of the hoop. So this is my applique file. And if I come over here, you'll see these are the applique steps. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this first step here, which is normally the step that your machine stitches so you know where to place your fabric. And then it shows me here that that first step is in orange. I'm going to left click on this section and it brings up this box. And if I click on applique, at the moment it says it's not applique. So I have to bring down this icon and click applique position. And automatically then, it inflates the size of that placement stitch line by 1.5 milli, which is the default. You can take it down, or and you can even take it up as much as three milli. But I'm gonna leave it on the default, 1.5 milli for now. And then it says here, save as cut. So I'm going to click on that and you can see now that the file that I brought in, the embroidery file here, 6 inch H dot Jeff, is now 6 inch H dot FCM. I'm going to save it on my desktop and that's it. Done. And I'm going to close this down. So now what I'm going to do is put the stitch file on my Janome memory stick and I'm going to put the FCM cutting file that's on my desktop onto my scan and cut USB stick and I'll come back in the video and show you when I get to my sewing machine and my cutting machine. Okay, so I'm hoping that you can see this and I'm trying to film this and 
choose the designs at the same time so forgive me if, if this part's a little bit shaky basically what i've done i've plugged my usb stick for my sewing machine into my machine i've gone to open and i've found my file and it's here i've hooped up a piece of stabilizer and i've just floated a piece of hessian on top and mark the center line because I didn't want to hoop it it's quite thick but I've put a little bit of repositionable fabric spray on the back of my hessian just to hold it in place and I'm going to stitch out the placement line and then go over to the scan and cut machine and get the scan and cut to cut me the FCM applique fabric that it created for me in essentials so i'm just going to start this off and i'll be back in a minute okay that's finished now i'm going to take the hoop out of the machine but i'm not going to move anything and then i'm going to get my scan and cut pieces once they're cut and i'll lay them on top of this this placement line and carry on okay so i'm at the scan and cut now i've loaded my fabric onto my mat which i'll talk to you about in a minute and i've put my usb stick in the side of my machine now i'm going to go into pattern into saved data onto my usb stick and i'm going to find my file that has my FCM cutting file in it from Embrilliance. And it's that one. I'm going to say OK and I'm going to do a background scan so that I can position the cutting file on my piece of fabric. So I'm not sure whether you can see this very well, but there's my cutting file and I'm going to bring it up here and place it onto my fabric. Now, what I would say, I've got a very, very sticky mat. It's my regular mat, which I've re-sticked using a Zig two-way glue pen with the jumbo tip. So my mat's very sticky and I've got my piece of fabric, which is a piece of Clark and Clark fabric, which is thicker than regular quilting cotton. And I've got nothing on the back of it at all, except I've sprayed it liberally with a repositionable spray adhesive. So basically I have a, a big cardboard box, a spray box. I put the fabric in there, a spray from top to bottom horizontally and then I go vertically from side to side so it's got a good amount of repositionable, but repositionable adhesive on it and it's stuck to a very sticky mat so I'm flying by the seat of my pants here but I'm going to see if it will cut I did the same thing using the calico when I cut the M split letter so I'm hoping that this will work as well and because I've got a slightly thicker fabric, I've actually put my blade to five and I've got my cut pressure on four. So we'll see how we go. Okay, that's finished. Just going to check before I unload it by lifting up a corner of the fabric to make sure it has actually cut. I find the worst thing is getting it off the mat. Yeah, that's cut. So I'm going to unload my mat and I'll be back in okay, a minute. I've removed the excess. I'm hoping you can see this. 
and as you can see fabric is very fibrous and it leaves all these fibres behind stuck to your mat but if you scrape them all off and then use an alcohol free baby wipe and go over your mat go from side to side and then up and down it will pick up all these bits for you now what I'm going to do I'm going to peel these off this mat and I'm going to give them a quick press with the iron before I put them on my um, fabric so I'll be back in a few minutes right I've just come back to my other desk now just to give me a bit more room but I don't know if you can see this the fabric looks frayed on the edges but that's more me peeling it off the mat than the scan and cut the scan and cut cut it clean all the way around as I said earlier this has nothing on the back of it at all except a, a liberal sp spraying of um, reposi repositionable adhesive onto a very sticky scan and cut mat so obviously fabric is fibrous and when I was peeling it off the mat I got a, f a couple of frays in a couple of places but basically if you look at the pieces and you look at the placement line which I don't know if you can see too clearly here in the pink the essential software has cut this fabric bigger than the placement line so I am now going to use a little bit of um, fabric glue and I'm just going to put a tiny bit on just to hold them in place for when I come back to the sewing machine to do my tack down stitches so I'm just going to carry on with this for a few minutes and then I'll go back to the sewing machine and I'll show you the next step right so I've got the hoop back in the machine and I've got the applique pieces that the scan and cut machine cut for me laid on top of the placement line and just held in a couple of places with a little bit of fabric glue pen and I'm now going to carry on. I'm at step two on my machine. I don't know if you can see that there. Okay. Just want to show you this it's finished doing the tack down stitch and because this um, scan and cut or I should say because Embrillian's Essentials made the scan and cut cut file 1.5 milli bigger you can see the pink sti stitch mark where it's actually grabbed all the pieces of fabric so I'm going to carry on now and I'll show you when we get to the next stage. So that's finished that step now. And it's just going to go on to the next step, which is putting the name in. When this is finished, I'll be back to show you. That's the design all finished. I'm going to take it off the hoop and I will show you a picture of the finished project. And here it is finished. All I've got to do now is put a rod through the top and it's ready to hang. <laughs>